The following narration, A Classical Student, by Anthon Chekhov, is a short story depicting the failure of the modern education system. It is an eye-opener for the modern world, and maybe, we can learn a lot from him. A Classical Student, before setting off for his examination in Greek, Vanya kissed all the holy images. His stomach felt as though it were upside down, there was a chill at his heart, while the heart itself throbbed and stood still with terror before the unknown. What would he get that day? A three or a two? Six times he went to his mother for her blessing, and, as he went out, asked his aunt to pray for him. On the way to school he gave a beggar two kopecks, in the hope that those two kopecks would atone for his ignorance, and that, please God, he would not get the numerals with those awful forties and eighties. He came back from the high school late, between four and five. He came in, and noiselessly lay down on his bed. His thin face was pale. There were dark rings round his red eyes. Well, how did you get on? How were you marked? Asked his mother, going to his bedside. Vanya blinked, twisted his mouth, and burst into tears. His mother turned pale, let her mouth fall open and clasped her hands. The breeches she was mending dropped out of her hands. What are you crying for? You failed. Then, she asked. I am plucked I got a two. I knew it would be so. I had a presentiment of it, said his mother. Merciful God. How is it? You have not passed. What is the reason of it? What subject have you failed in? In Greek mother, I they asked me the future of Pharaoh, and I instead of saying oi I samai said opsamai. Then then there isn't an accent, if the last syllable is long, and I got flustered, I forgot that the alpha was long in it I went and put in the accent. Then Artaxaxoff told me to give the list of the enclitic particles I did, and I accidentally mixed in a pronoun and made a mistake and so he gave me a two. I am a miserable person. I was working all night I've been getting up at four o'clock all this week. No. It's not you but I who am miserable, you wretched boy. It's I that am miserable. You've worn me to a thread paper, you Herod, you torment, you bane of my life. I pay for you, you good for nothing rubbish. I've bent my back toiling for you, I'm worried to death, and, I may say, I am unhappy. And what do you care? How do you work? I, I do work. All night you've seen it yourself. I prayed to God to take me, but he won't take me a sinful woman. You torment. Other people have children like everyone else, and I've one only and no sense, no comfort out of him. Beat you? I'd beat you, but where am I to find the strength? Mother of God, where am I to find the strength? The mama hid her face in the folds of her blouse and broke into sobs. Vanya wriggled with anguish and pressed his forehead against the wall. The aunt came in. So that's how it is just what I expected she said, at once guessing what was wrong, turning pale and clasping her hands. I've been depressed all the morning there's trouble coming, I thought and here it's come. The villain, the torment, why are you swearing at him? cried the aunt, nervously pulling her coffee-colored kerchief off her head and turning upon the mother. It's not his fault, it's your fault, you are to blame. Why did you send him to that high school? You are a fine lady. You want to be a lady? Ah, I dare say, as though you'll turn into gentry. But if you had sent him, as I told you, into business to an office, like my Kuzia here is Kuzia getting 500 a year. 500 rubles is worth having, isn't it? And you are wearing yourself out, and wearing the boy out with this studying, plague take it. He is thin, he coughs just look at him, he's 13, and he looks no more than 10. No, Narsenka, no, my dear, I haven't thrashed him enough, the torment. He ought to have been thrashed, that's what it is. Ugh. Jesuit, Mohammed, torment. She shook her fist at her son. You want a flogging, but I haven't the strength. They told me years ago when he was little, whip him, whip him. I didn't heed them, sinful woman as I am. And now am I suffering for it? You wait a bit, I'll flay you. Wait a bit. The mommy shook her wet fist, and went weeping into her lodger's room. The lodger, Yevtahi Kuzmich Kuparesov, was sitting at his table reading dancing self-taught. Yevdahi Kuzmich, was a man of intelligence and education. He spoke through his nose, washed with a soap the smell of which made everyone in the house sneeze, 
ate meat on fast days, and was on the lookout for a bride of refined education, and so was considered the cleverest of the lodgers. He sang tenor, my good friend, began the mama, dissolving into tears. If you would have the generosity, thrash my boy for me do me the favor. He's failed in his examination, the nuisance of a boy. Would you believe it, he's failed. I can't punish him, through the weakness of my ill health. Thrash him for me, if you would be so obliging and considerate. Yevtihi Kuzmich, have regard for a sick woman. Kuparasov frowned and heaved a deep sigh through his nose. He thought a little, drummed on the table with his fingers, and sighing once more, went to Vanya. You are being taught, so to say, he began, being educated, being given a chance, you revolting young person. Why have you done it? He talked for a long time, made a regular speech. He alluded to science, to light and to darkness. Yes, young person. When he had finished his speech, he took off his belt and took Vanya by the hand. It's the only way to deal with you, he said. Vanya knelt down submissively and thrust his head between the lodger's knees. His prominent pink ears moved up and down against the lodger's new serge trousers, with brown stripes on the outer seams. Vanya did not utter a single sound. At the family council in the evening, it was decided to send him into business.